key, though, is that we're, we're attached to the structures. We're attached to the activities. We're attached to our own experience and projecting that you'll grow if you have my experience. We have all these attachments about the outcome. What we're missing, what I miss all those years, is the value and the power of teaching people how to choose powerfully for themselves, whether it was yes or whether it was no. Now, it's easy. We know what to do when people choose yes and they go for it. We probably know how to process it when they choose it and they don't quite make it. What we don't necessarily get is how to process it when they don't do that same thing, to which the question right now is, what is participation? What is participation? In the wind and the willow activity, what is participation? This is, it's all boils down to this. Your perception of participation. This is a key moment right here. What is participation? Showing up. Choosing an appropriate level of challenge for yourself. OK. OK. In the outer circle. Okay, all right. Completing the goal you set for yourself. Okay, those are those are all highly evolved and very uh, aware answers. Very good. Now, what do you think that the average participant showing up on your course think participation is? On the wind and the willow, what do they think participation is? Going into the center. On the leap of faith, what do you think they think participation is? Jumping for the bar. So they have a mental model of participation. On the wind and the willow, have you ever seen people really not want to go into the center? They just, they just wait or they hesitate and they just don't go. How do you facilitate? And they go through the whole activity and they never go in the center. What do you do with that? OK, there's a way to do it. So we find ways, in, in effect, sometimes what we do in our language is we patronize the people who don't go into the center. And I have you ever said, and for those of you who didn't participate today, who said that before? And for those of you who stayed on the ground today, who gets the applause, the acknowledgment, the validation? Who gets that? The people who do the thing, right? The people who climb, the people who jump, the people go, they get, all the per they get all the validation. The person who doesn't go into the center, who doesn't climb the pole, what do they get? How do people talk to them? Do people talk to them? It, it could be a lot of stuff. The person on crutches or a cane, we don't do that to them, do we? They have the perfect reason. They, j they get a pat, they're accepted. It's like, wow, man, you know, maybe another time and stuff like that. I've seen people that, are really out of their bodies. It's someone that they never expected to climb. They don't expect them to climb. They don't do the same thing to those people. And those people get some, some acknowledgment. The people who look healthy and able-bodied who don't climb, sometimes people won't even talk to them. So, so that, the reason, what's that? Why didn't you climb? Why didn't you climb today? Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, is we're still, our bias is still towards the climbing, doing thing and not towards the choice thing. So the, the wind in the willow activity, is there anything dangerous about it? What's dangerous about the wind in the willow activity? Uh, for what? OK, so physically trusting they'll physically catch me and won't drop me. What else is dangerous about the wind in the willow? Touched in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. Now, you want to know what's dangerous about the middle for some people? If you've been physically, sexually, or emotionally abused and preyed upon, nobody might know it, and you're sent into the center either because you believe or you're told or you're invited, encouraged into the center, now all of a sudden I am forced into a place where I have to be in a circle where I don't want to be touched. I have a deep trauma, in real trauma in my life that you would never guess you have now placed me in danger. I am there because of an external local control and perception. I am now in deep 
deep danger. And it's so powerful that I could completely come unglued at the scene. I watched a woman one day in a battered women's program, and we were doing this thing with blindfolds, and I said, pull your hat down, close your eyes, leave your eyes open. Here's uh, blindfolds if you want. Your choice. I don't care if you close your eyes at all. I watched the woman grab this, this um, bandana. She looked at it. Gone. Completely came apart at the scene. Was unable to hear all that. What she heard was, blindfold, put it on. I don't know it to the extent, but the therapist later came back and said, you know, obviously you don't know the, the, the trauma that this person had been through. You don't know what people have been through their lives. You don't know what they feel. You don't know what they need. You don't know what they don't need. You don't know what they shouldn't be asked to do. And our structures create in our wonderful loving hearts a deeply dangerous, traumatic rewounding of people who carry stuff with them. And basically, they hold it together until they're put into that situation. Because we got a whacked out perception of what participation is. Participation is everybody going in the center. Anybody terrified now to lead that activity again? You want a solution? I'll give it to you right now. Want it? Team breath. Reframe participation. One, in my program, you don't have to do nothing. Two, the only person you need to perform for today is yourself. Three, the only person you can volunteer is yourself. This is about you. This is about your choices. This is about you deciding what's right for you. This is about you setting your goals that could look absolutely fantastically, incredibly, unbelievably different than what anybody else does. This isn't about a game of follow the leader. I don't want you doing what everybody else does. I don't care if you climb. I don't care. I care that you make a powerful choice and you set goals that are uniquely tuned into you and that you make and avoid and don't do the things that you know that you shouldn't do, don't want to do, are dangerous for you. And you don't have to explain it to anybody here. It's none of our business. If you want to, you can. We don't need to know why. We just need to know what your goal is and your choice. So in the win in the willow, let me redefine participation. In the win in the willow, participation is being present for the activity physically. You are here with us and you are engaged with us. You're not thinking about someone else. You're not on your thing, electronic thing. You're here. Participation in this activity, if you are capable, is being one of the spotters. That would really help us. Most people can spot to some degree, and there's lots of us, so we should be fine. Participation in this activity is making a choice. This activity, the win and the will, was about your ability to choose what's right for you. I expect you to be present. I expect you to help spot if you're physically able to do that. Going into the center of the circle is a choice. No person here must go into the center. If no one goes into the center today, but you choose that powerfully, I will celebrate you. I think that's just fine. However, to be compliant. So in our experience, I'd like you to have choice. I'm not going to force you to do anything. But there are things I expect you to do to be present in this activity. Being present is an expectation. It is something that you must demonstrate compliance with. Everyone here is, is capable of being present here. Everyone here is capable of making a choice. Most of the people here, the vast majority, are capable of spotting. Now, the person who has a, a, um, a spinal problem or a leg injury, they may not be able to help spotting, and we, we kind of get that. Um, <coughs> compliance is the middle area between choice and coercion. We don't want to force. We want free will. 
but we also don't want you do not have permission to go run out to the outhouse and sit there and smoke cigarettes the rest of the day. You do not have permission to check out and go over and sit on the bench the whole time. You do not have permission to disengage from what we're doing and hang out with your friend or be on your phone. Sorry, you can't do that. Those are all compliance issues. But when it comes to stepping into the center, you have a choice. What you must do in this circle is tell us what your choice is and do what you choose. If you say, my choice is to go into the center, then I'm going to expect you to go into the center. You're choosing that. And I'm going to encourage you because it's your stated goal. And encouragement, encouraging people means that you're responding to their stated goal. My goal is to touch the pole and to walk away. Cool. That's your stated goal. If you, go, if you stay out of the circle, it's because you're making a choice. And what we want to do is we want to normalize people making good choices. I choose to go in. I choose to stay out. My choice in this activity is to stay out here. I'm going to be a good spotter. I'm going to be attentive and stuff. No interest in going in. Happy to support those of you who want to. Powerful. Everybody gets acknowledgment in that piece. Participation, then, we refine, re redefine into being physically present and dealing with the compliance issues. Present, helping if I can, part of the debrief, part of the, the course briefing, part of the discussions, helping other people, being positively engaged. You don't have to climb and you don't have to let other people touch you.